Welcome everyone to another episode of the Art of Slowing Down podcast. It's your host here, Annalena. As always, I'm very excited to be with you all. And today I'm very happy to have a special guest with me. I think she's also a listener of the podcast. She reached out to me recently. I was also on her podcast. We're going to tell you a little bit more about that in just a little bit. Her name is Anna Kinney, and she's a 5'1 manifesting generator, also called creative time bender with emotional authority. Also Leo Sun, Leo Rising, Aquarius Moon, lots of energy there, multi-passionate, intuitive healer, spiritual entrepreneur, and also a folk musician to boot. And she has gratefully lived on the Hado Noshi lands, what is also called Central New York, for most of her life. And she's supporting women who are on their spiritual journey and are ready to break free from the subconscious conditioning of the toxic patriarchy to write a new story for themselves and create the life that they desire, right? She's also trained, certified with quantum human design and the quantum alignment method. She's also in astrocartography, as I know already, because I was on her podcast last week and which I don't know if it's going to be out by the time this is going to be out, but we will find out about that. And she also has a very own podcast that is called Music by Design. That's the one I, I was on. So there's a lot more, I think, but I wanted to just give you a warm welcome and maybe you can add on just a few things to that, Anna. Welcome. Thank you so much for having me here, Annalena. I've been looking forward to coming on your podcast and talking about all sorts of things and allowing the 2034 channel to guide us mm, <laughs> in whatever yeah. wants to come through. <laughs> um, in addition to the things you mentioned, uh, I do a lot of other things. I also started a flower farm with my husband last year mm. where we um, we have a, a third partner who owns the land and she does a lot of the admin stuff. And then he and I do the like on the ground work and the planning and the planting and the harvesting and we wound up uh, getting married there in September last year. Oh, you know what's so funny? I'm always amazed by these synchronicities. So I was just writing my email newsletter that's coming out tomorrow. And uh, because it's Valentine's today, right? As we are recording this. Mm -hmm. And I literally like the first paragraph, I'm, I'm writing about flowers. And now you're oh, talking wonderful. about the, the flower business. I think that's that's really cool. I love flowers. They're just so enriching our lives, right? Yeah, same. And it's actually something I think about human design a lot when we are working with the flowers and when I'm thinking about the flower farm. And it's something that I've wanted to investigate more, but haven't found a ton of resources around uh, like the plant gates, like there's plant gates mm -hmm. and there's animal gates and then there's the human gates, right? So mm -hmm. like one of the plant gates is gate 34 which is the like impetus for the the seed to break open and push up through the dirt mm. and become a little baby plant is like that's gate 34 that's the the energy of power and mm, I love that. you know and and so like having that within me I feel like I look at I love when you see the little green bit that comes out of the dirt and it's like oh it's mm. a little baby plant um and I've I've heard a few other people speak to like gate, I think it's gate 15 is another plant gate. Yeah. And that's one that folks that have that, that work with plants, they really resonate with the idea of like, they communicate with the plants, like they can hear them, they speak to them and things like that in like a very potent way, which mm -hmm. I don't have gate 15 defined in my chart and I don't feel like I literally hear plants talking to me, but I do relate to them in other ways. And it's something I'm interested in diving into more. If anybody out there listening does that within the human design realm, I would love to um, learn a little bit more about that perspective because yeah. it's something that I've always been really drawn to them and work with them a lot and um, yeah, want to weave that it. into the work. So yeah. I love it. So before we dive also more into your very own podcast and the music aspect, how you bring this into human design, I would love to hear from you. So how was that when you found out 
that you are a 5-1 emotional manifesting generator and how did it even come into your life? Okay, so all three pieces of that tagline, 5-1 emotional manifesting generator, each of them as individual pieces are all the three most impactful things that I learned about that that's what sold me. I was like, okay, this makes so much sense. Mm -hmm. Now I want to learn everything. So the story is I had been in a certification training program locally here with a woman who had like an art center. And I, it was like a three part program throughout the whole summer. And then it ended with this big retreat and certification, all this stuff. And I mainly signed up for it because I wanted the sound healing component of the program. And then there was also like an expressive arts pro part of the program and a drumming for healing and transformation part of the program. And I really just wanted the sound healing part, but I, after talking with her and kind of getting involved with things, I decided to sign up for the whole program. And so the first installment was in June and it was the expressive arts weekend. It was like a whole weekend. And I had a lot of emotional stuff that came through that weekend. And I had been working very closely with her a lot. Like in addition to doing this training, she invited me to basically apprentice with her and become kind of her right hand person to help her run her art center and programs and all this sort of stuff. So I was there a lot. I was I was going in there like three or four days a week and, you know, learning different painting techniques and and learning how she ran classes and all this sort of stuff. And so that energy of the five lines started to like build up this interesting thing. I call this the five line situation. So <laughs> after that, after that first weekend training, we, there was, I don't know, 20 people or so in the training. We were doing this like drumming program at local libraries and we went to one and basically like there had been, I don't know, it felt like a weird miscommunication. And basically I got a certification in that first weekend that said I could teach that component. And then my Reiki master reached out to me asking if I wanted to teach that at her retreat she was doing two months later. And I said, sure. And then it just like became this whole thing. And the woman who was doing the training basically told me I couldn't do that. And all this sort of stuff happened. And she got really mad at me. And mm -hmm. basically like, we were at this drumming thing downtown and she like started yelling at me on the sidewalk out like outside in the middle of the city with other people were watching what was happening. And, and it was just really confusing to me. And she just got really mad at me and kicked me out of the program. And I was like, wow, Whoa, it was, so interesting. it was wild and intense. And I wanted to say so many things to her that, would have been not kind. And instead I just walked away. I walked down the street and went, got, went back to my car and I left and, um, yeah. And there were a few people there that were in the program that witnessed it happen and they were just as confused as I was. And it was, and it was just horrible. It was heartbreaking. And I didn't understand why she had gotten so upset about something that I did so, I didn't even do it. I just yeah, like yeah. I had I had been asked to do to yeah. share what I had just gotten certified in. And it was mm -hmm. very confusing. And there was there was no like paperwork saying I couldn't do that. There was no like nothing like that. I mean, and you, I, you, you, you get certified so you can teach right. it, and which I even sometimes find interesting. And I have also offered certification myself. Um, but there is this ownership that I can sense. And just from me listening to the story, what, what I would say, that's my opinion here, is that the lady was jealous that you got invited to this and she wished she would have gotten invited to do this and kind of something like that. I mean, I don't, 
I don't even know. I, I don't think it was just like, I think it was just a control thing. I think it was just like, she told me that, yeah, I got the certification, but that I, I'm only allowed to do it at her approval or something. It was really, <laughs> con it was very yeah, convoluted yeah, and very so strange. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, it I was think wild. it has to do with control then or like this sense of ownership that, you know, because I taught you, you have to ask for permission. And that's a total control thing. I have experienced similar situations. And every time I have this, I honestly walk away from things because I'm really attracted to, for example, the Jinkies, right? Richard Rudd. I don't know if you have noticed, but nothing there is trademarked or copyrighted or whatever. I think we know inside when there is time to give credit to something, you know, and where it's coming from. But they actually have a true interest from the heart that this message or this technique gets out into the world to help humans. Because really what happens is when somebody, because of the ego or need to control, does not allow you to share this gift, it's actually limiting the flow of abundance in the universe, if you ask me, right? I mean, it's all coming from the ego at the end of the day. And yeah. sending her love and blessings because obviously you triggered a very deep wound inside of her and hopefully uh, that person has been able to work on that. Yes, yes. So after all that kind of happened, um, one of the women who was in the in the group of people getting trained, she was, her and I were mutual friends and um, I know her through music and stuff like that. And she actually reached out to me and she was like, hey, I heard about what happened so sorry that happened and also i i do this thing called human design and i would like to share it with you because i think mm -hmm. it might help you understand what happened without even knowing what my design was yeah. but she you know you, once you start to know you can be like oh i bet you that person's a three or i bet you that yeah, person's yeah. a man -agent. you know so like she probably wanted to know for herself too but she offered to do a reading for me so she came over it was like the week of my birthday and she came over to my house and we sat in my backyard for three hours and mm. she showed me my chart and she started to explain about what being a manifesting generator was all about but I think we might have started with the fifth line because I think that that was like she was like this is what this is what happened like I explained mm. to her my side of the story she had heard the other person's side of the story she was like this is bogus this is probably a fifth line projection thing <laughs> And she shared with me about being a 5'1". And I was like, oh, my oh, God, wow. <laughs> that makes so much sense and explains not just that situation, but a lot of different situations that I've been in, as well as like there was another situation that happened like months after, like a few months after that, that was almost identical, totally different group of people. But another identical thing where I was like helping to plan like a, a women's weekend and then after and, the, and then it just and then it just exploded in my face and there was nothing I could do or say to convince and they kicked me out of this weekend that I was a part of planning in the first place it was wild and like there are times like yes like sometimes I say something in the moment that comes out it made sense to me in my head <laughs> contextually and then when I say it I can see how it can be taken the wrong way if you're coming from a different place or you don't understand the context but it's not like the thing I said was meant to be harmful or was inherently harmful but it's just people twist around the things that come out of my 2034 which is very unconscious mm -hmm. it's mm -hmm. an unconscious channel for me yeah. um, sometimes things come out and I don't I don't realize the impact it's going to have until I hear it. <laughs> I'm like, oh, mm. oops. And then you have to uh, backpedaling and explaining. And and sometimes I just, I just, I have to just walk away and just be like, okay. And part of that too is like, I have Venus in gate 39 is the gate of provocation. Oh, nice. And like, <laughs> yeah, you're going to be full on force. <laughs> yeah. People, like, people are just going to be irritated when you just walk in the room sometimes, right? Yes. And, and I've learned to take it as just a, 
feedback and information as a, it's a filter mm -hmm. for me. It's like, mm -hmm. okay, well, if that's how that person is perceiving me, don't waste your energy trying to convince them otherwise. Yeah. Just let them think and feel whatever they're going to think and feel. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. and, and then the people that can, that like me, like, I crack jokes all the time. My gate 30 wants to keep things light, you know? So like I I crack little jokes and the wrong person would take th this very insignificant little thing and would turn it and twist it around and make it like a whole thing about mm -hmm. them. Mm -hmm. Whereas like, I'm just like, I'm just trying to like keep things light, you know? So I've learned that even my little, my little, wisecracks i just did one the other day where a friend of mine said ephemeris she said it ephemeris and i just looked at her i go it's pronounced ephemeris you know and she mm. cracked up laughing she thought it was the funniest thing and then i like quoted harry potter afterwards and that was funny i'm like okay cool like it's just more feedback that person is for me because mm -hmm. my little provocation or my little my little tiny little jab does not get taken the wrong way by her so that means mm -hmm. she's i keep her I keep her yeah. around. Whereas if somebody like reacts to something so innocent like that in a way where like I'm all of a sudden like the worst person on the planet. OK, well, you are not ready for me and my energy then. Yeah, so, yeah. you know, so. So, yeah. So she told me about the being a five one totally resonated, made a lot of sense. And then she told me about being an MG and the emotional authority thing. And at that time. Um, I'd already been studying energy work and different things and had studied lots of religions and philosophies. And I, I had a pretty like open, I have a pretty open Ajna. So I'm just kind of like, I take everything and and can see how anything can have value. And, but understanding the emotional wave, that didn't come until way later. And I've been in my experiment for four and a half years now. So the thing I had the most trouble really grasping in my mind was this responding piece. Mm. Like, like, wait, what? What is, what does this, like, it just hadn't clicked for me. And it, it took maybe almost a year for me to really get it and, and really understand not just intellectually, but actually to like be getting it in the moment when I felt a response or when I made a noise or when I made a sound like my my most common response is, ooh, that's that's my my MG response is usually, ooh, yeah. <laughs> whenever something really excites me. Yeah. And when I hear myself make that noise, sometimes now I can like I feel it bubbling up within me before it even comes out of my mouth now mm. like often and that's how I know I'll even almost stop myself from making the noise because I already know I'm like oh there it is <laughs> yeah I love it no it's so interesting because this is not something we're gonna learn from reading about it it does take it's an experiment right you have to actually experiment with it and live life to see how it you know sounds for yeah. you and I love that you say because for the 3420 if I'm gonna follow the textbook it's being taught it's a yes, no, yep, no, right? But you have the ooh. So it is individual. Also the whole sacral response, I have worked with so many managers and generators. It feels different for people. It totally feels different. It has also to do with how we experience intuition based off our signs. Like, do you have more earth? Do you have more air in your chart and astrology? So like for me, it's a whole body feeling, which I now understand is I have a lot of earth. I'm a whole earth person. So my body, so it's very... Interesting. So one thing I want to share with you, which I find so interesting in terms of synchronicities, because just so you guys know, Anna, since she's also very advanced with human design, we're gonna she's also very intrigued about the whole cosmic human design, which I have been talking about more recently. So the which is based on the true sidereal astrology. And we will also look at her chart on both of the charts to kind of now get another new perspective on it. And so I am a 2-4 manifesting generator with sacral authority, as you know, in tropical human design. Now, guess what I am in cosmic human design? I don't know if I've shared, but I'm a 5-1. You're a 5-1, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm a 5-1, and the 39 is in my incarnation cross. That's my conscious earth. And my also 51 is also in my incarnation cross. So 
I have also, so my partner in Tropical is a 5-1 man in general with emotional authority, for example, has also a gate 39. So I'm, I have seen this energy like everywhere. And the majority of people are always attracted. They either had the 39 or the 50, 51 energy in their chart, you know, and lots of five lines. The 5-1 profile is probably what I have been surrounded with and worked with the most. It just, and I find this so interesting because now, in my true sidereal, that's who I am. And, you know, I'm a very highly recovering people pleaser. You know, as a five line, that's a big conundrum, right? It's like the guild and stuff. So, but it's helped me so much because I also have had so many instances in my life, also especially in my business, where, and look, we all have five lines, I think. We all project on each other in some way, right? It's not like, I think oftentimes I think people think that because they are five line, they don't have any other any of their own things and it's only projection, but we project on each other, right? Um, but I'm also like you, like I can make these like I'm very attention to detail. I have a lot of Virgo in my chart, you know, and I don't mean bad. I'm just like, but it triggers people so badly sometimes. And um I have no bad intentions whatsoever, right? And I and I just I bring up stuff just from being myself. And I can so relate with the jokes because I like to joke around, just make a you know, and sometimes I catch myself, well, what if somebody's gonna take it wrong? Well, mm -hmm. then you gotta work on that, you know, but I didn't mm -hmm. have any bad intentions. And you know, if we always hold back from being who we really are, we're going to spend a life walking on eggshells, but we're not being our true self. And I've just found that when I'm myself, there are some people that fall off, yes, but they're not for me and that's okay. And then the other people, they attract, they, they come to you, right? Because they really resonate with your, with your true essence and it's especially as I think as a five one with like gate thirty nine and also fifty one on top of it, like and not for everyone, we're just not, and that's okay. Oh. Yeah. So. Yeah. The whole idea that like, oh, if I'm a five one, then I I don't I don't have the two four or I don't have the three line or anything like that. And it's just not true, you know. Um, the perspective that we have all of the chart, right? Mm -hmm. And not just that we have it all, but that like the chart is meant to be this like outline of the main things that that life is going to bring to you for you to learn about, mm -hmm. right? So whether it's defined in your chart or undefined in your chart, we're learning all of it. It's mm. just about in what direction is the energy flowing that's bringing you the learning, yeah. right? So like I'm learning how to be a good five line. I'm learning how to be a good five line so I can show everyone else this is what it's like to be a five line, right? Whereas I'm also learning how it is to be a two, a three, a four, and a six from everybody around me. Yeah, I love this because that's always what I try to explain to people. Don't yeah. just think you're only this. And I find it, especially with a five one, there's there's this idea because of this projection field that they have to explain to other people that they're just projecting. You don't have to explain anything. It's for you to learn how to respond to that. And like you have explained, sometimes you just have to walk away. Don't yeah. don't even engage. It's not here to justify because they may also project something on you. They may also have some five lines somewhere, right? It's just a it's a strong theme. And exactly like you say, when we have defined, we're here to teach to others. And that's why I also love the jinky so much, because I think Richard Rudd says it over and over again. Like, yeah, your line you want to look at but to really understand your line you want to look at all of the lines because they're, they're so interconnected you know and we have to i think really hone in or create awareness that all of the lines are relevant to all of us yeah you know and there's no like black or white or that's why i love you know like i don't even have to explain it to you because you just you have that same inner knowing 
Yeah. And it's like each line is an evolutionary step. Mm -hmm. Right. And yeah. like the two line is like the next step after the one, but before the three, it's, it's, mm -hmm. it's the two line has now doesn't have to go outside of themselves for knowledge. They just have to cultivate the inner knowledge, but they're not quite out in the world making tons of quote unquote mistakes. Right. Like the three line would. So it's like the yeah. three line is just like evolving that information to the next level and then the four lines evolving it further and it just keeps moving through this like little ev evolutionary cycle mm -hmm. within each gate within each energy which we repeat every year yeah you know so yeah to see it try and blowing the perspective wider and further out a little bit which is where whether you're looking at tropical or sidereal or true sidereal or cosmic or any calculation, I mean, it's still all curriculum. It's still all learning. So it's just how do you spin that quality of the way you're learning? So mm -hmm. when I can I tell my story of how I found out about cosmic human design? Of course, I want to hear it. It's wasn't the best experience I gotta say oh, so and I honor that like a lot of people find out about just regular human design and they're like ugh, you know like mm -hmm. the same thing like ugh, I don't and not for me right fine totally fine so it was I think January of 2021 so I had been in my experiment for about a year and I was at an event here locally and I met a fellow who had a, like a little booth and he was advertising human design readings. And I was like, oh, interesting. I've not, I have not run into anyone else in our area that is just doing readings at events like this. I'm curious to see what he has to say and sat down with him and he looked at my chart and he was telling me about cosmic human design. And I was like, wait, what is this? And I, I knew that like sidereal existed, but I just didn't, wasn't ready to like go down a rabbit hole or learn a whole other way of looking at these calculations and stuff. I'm still like trying to get a grip on what the heck the emotional wave is all about. Right. So mm -hmm. I'm like, I'm not, I'm not, I don't think I can handle another thing, but he's explaining it to me. And I have a totally open head. And an undefined Ajna in both sidereal and and tropical, and I think in the cosmic chart too. Um, and it felt like, like literally, his perspective and his ideas and his thoughts were all just being poured right into me, mm. and it wasn't mixing well with the understanding I already had. And what really rubbed me the wrong way, and, and I come from a background in like, I grew up in uh, evangelical Christian church, which I no longer am a part of, and mm -hmm. that very dogmatic, very like pushy kind of vibe. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I like, I feel when I feel a push from someone like that on anything, my immediate reaction is like, oh, hell no. Like yeah. I immediately am like, nope, I get out of there. I want to revolt. I want to rebel. I am not about, do not tell me what to do. I'm a manifesting generator. You cannot tell me what is true. I have to figure it out for myself, right? So mm. uh, I even, I wrote a song once called Don't Tell Me What to Do. So just to give you an example. So <laughs> he's telling me that tropical is wrong. Yeah, I get you then that, okay. And that's not cool. Making yeah. tropical human design wrong. Yeah. That's not what I want to listen to. And I think this is also maybe why the cosmic human design has gotten a little bit of a bad vibe for some people, because yeah. I'm so thankful to tropical human design. That was my access point. And also this idea that you can have a conditioned chart, that in itself to me is so wrong because every chart, no matter what it looks like, is incredibly beautiful. You know, we can always be in any energy, any center, any gate, any channel. We can be in the lower or the higher expression, but there is no chart that is conditioning you and into anything. No. So that that was for me where I was like, okay, something is a little bit off here. And I think yeah. we need to actually shed some light on this. 
Yeah, it was the way that the information was delivered that really rubbed me the wrong way. And also, he was reading people's charts from the comic cosmic human design calculation for people that had no idea what human design was to begin with. Mm -hmm. And I felt like he was doing a huge disservice in the way that it was being delivered. It was just mm -hmm. really harsh, really like I'm right, you're wrong. And mm -hmm. sent me into like a tailspin for three or four days. I then with my five, my, my one line, I like dove into research. I, I listened to a whole bunch of podcasts that Richard Mason was on. I um, read a bunch of blog posts. I talked to other people that had encountered human cosmic human design online and like and read about like what is sidereal, like what yeah. is the sidereal calculation compared to tropical. And in that investigating, I came to a couple key pieces that helped me find like clarity and resolution. Mm -hmm. Number one was the not self of my open head and Ajna is feeling pressure to understand and feeling pressure to be certain. And I was spinning out of my mind trying to find that, that certainty and trying to find mm -hmm. that grounding in like, I have to pick one. I have to pick yeah. one. I have to choose a side. And after three days of spinning out, all of a sudden I saw myself in that. And I was like, oh, wait. This is putting me into my not self of my energy. So then therefore for me, I'm just going to leave it all down. Yeah, It's not Absolutely. for me, yeah. right? Same thing, like if you get into human design and it's not resonating for you, that's fine. Yeah. That's okay. Guess what? Mm -hmm. There's a million other modalities out there for understanding yourself. Mm. Exactly. No, I'm so happy you make this point because I also, in the beginning, when I learned about human design, I was so excited about it and I wanted to tell all my sisters about it and everybody. And I, I quickly realized like, hey, just because this works for me, so beautiful, does not mean it's for everyone. Just like... Some people, they find the Enneagram the most enlightening thing ever. And for me, it doesn't even talk to me. Some other archetypal things work for others. For other people, it's, it's Christianity. And that's amazing, right? There's nothing wrong with any of anything. What matters is what resonates with you. But I think we have to be so careful as uh, human design practitioners to to have that flexibility and knowing like, and this is what also the, the whole sequel has taught me. If it's defined or undefined, let it come to you. If people want it, let them come to you and then you respond, but don't, yeah, push this out there. Like it's the truth for everybody. Right. It's, right, it's right. not. Yeah. And the other piece that I came to in researching, like what is sidereal? Um, so the difference between tropical and sidereal in a very broad stroke, and correct me if, if I misspeak because mm. you're studying it a little bit deeper, but uh, tropical astrology is very much earth-centered and it's based on seasons and mm. it's based on um, our movement and the movement of planets around us, right? Because guess what? We're here on earth, right? So mm. that makes mm. sense. Totally makes sense. Sidereal is more taking into account the movements of the cosmos and the when you look at the chart the earth is still in there right we're still kind of at the center but it's trying to be more like proportional to like the size and distance of the constellations and so that's why like the the different signs are one smaller one's bigger there's a 13th mm -hmm. one in there right because yeah. we're actually supposed to be on a lunar calendar not a solar calendar but whatever and like it's it's a different layout because it's it's taking in a more cosmic perspective yeah, rather yeah. than just this earth centered and for me when i was learning this about sidereal i'm like okay so i also like have dabbled in stuff like uh star seed archetypes and and connecting with mm. galactic beings right and i think it's really cool and fun as long as you don't get into like the really like 
nitty gritty dogmatic stuff. Like when they start talking about Anunnaki and how there's like an evil plan, I'm like, okay, that's not for me yeah, anymore. I, I, right. <laughs> but tell me about the Pleiadians and the Lyrians and the Arcturians and all that good stuff. And I'm like into it, right? It's another archetypal system. So I was connecting those ideas to this idea of sidereal, mm -hmm. whereas like tr tropical human design is more elemental. It's more earth-based. Mm -hmm. So being that I'm a human in a physical body on this planet, I really resonate with the tropical system. Yep. As an this is something I've I've come to learn and have heard other people speak about too with human design is like it's it really is meant for those of us that are not already living according to like what is right for us, right? It's a it's a tool to get you to learn how to distinguish and discern what is correct for you apart mm -hmm. from all the conditioning, apart from all the yeah. layers, apart from all the outside messaging. Once you, if you ever get to this place of being fully deconditioned and, and living in that perfect, um, that city state, right? In mm -hmm. the gene keys. I mean, if you're in that Siddic state or in fully in the gift state, you don't need human design anymore. Exactly. Thank right? you. Right. <laughs> so, so, tropical or sidereal doesn't matter just whatever route gets you to that connection exactly. of the self and i feel like if i want to explore the cosmic it's like that's like maybe a different it's like a whole different dimension to mm -hmm. to look at the chart within it needs yeah. to be like a different higher dimension higher evolutionary way you're looking at that chart like it's not me as a human on the earth it's no it's me as a cosmic being yeah. amongst the infinite cosmos of the universe it's a different it's a different flavor and so like when i've looked at my my cosmic human design and my sidereal and my and my tropical i can read every single one of those charts in a way where yeah that resonates yeah, I, I, exactly. Because I have already done a couple of readings now looking at both the tropical and the cosmic human design. I'm going to tell you, totally different types, totally different authority. And I can extract almost very similar wisdom. I mean, there, there are some minuscule changes that are incredibly empowering. And I find that, but this is people that have been with tropical human design for a while because they, they do sense something is slightly off. And that's okay, right? At some point you start to question and you you trust yourself so much deeper where it's like, yeah, that's not really me. And then they find that element then in the cosmic, but so many of the other elements, they're so similar and it's not contradicting in any way or form, right? And yeah, yeah just like you say, um, the the sidereal, and it's also, there's more to it. There's sidereal and there's true sidereal. So it's, it's basically, if you look at um, astrology natal chart, it's like, slightly shifted with the degrees and like you say it's it's uh, the 13 signs now they're not all the same size like virgo is i think one of the biggest signs right but then we also have Ophicus, which is the 13th sign which we don't have in the regular astrology and it's something with like it doesn't take into account the ecliptic and how that has shifted over time but it's mm -hmm. kind of based mm -hmm. on how it was two thousand years ago but it's not like incredibly far off right it, it's it's like grounding us in the 3D. And I definitely recommend mastering the Zodiac, Ethan Chimente's website for reading more about True Sideal because he beautifully explains it. And he also, just like you and I, he has this very all-encompassing approach that he doesn't say that tropical astrology is wrong. It's just a, it's a different access point. It's a different perspective. Now, he obviously teaches and shares all the knowledge about true sidereal and i find this at the point where i'm at right now just like you right like four years plus into the experience it's that next level of like expansion that is just has found me for some reason i mean i wasn't looking for it to be honest with the cosmic human design and i find it also interesting that because i guess i mean i'm a little bit of an influencer right in human design space by now and I had you, many other people actually reach out to me and you guys were into cosmic human. When you went to learn about cosmic human design and Alina had no idea about it, like no idea. This literally came to me more like, 
I think it was five months ago, like in the in the second half of 2023 in our mastermind. And she was on the podcast here too, Dr. Marie Weidbrecht. She brought the topic of regular Vedic and sidereal astrology. Like she wanted to talk about it. We had a whole session in our mastermind. And then we looked at the sidereal chart in genetic matrix. It was interesting, but they, I didn't feel the full pull yet. There was... I thought there was something there kind of cool, but I was kind of, uh, 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 I don't know. And then I started to research on YouTube. I found a bunch of things and I found the cosmic human design and then mastering the Zodiac. And it, it did kind of a similar research that you did, I guess. And then eventually they kept coming more more people asked me. And when I shared that episode on my podcast recently, there were so many people that were like, oh my God, thank you, because I have been doing this for so long. And I think people have been a little bit afraid almost to talk about it because there is this backlash a little bit. Or I think what has been created, like we discussed this, like, oh, tropical is wrong and cosmic is right. That's not what this is about. We have to learn to accept that we have different preferences. We have different things that we feel are right or wrong. There is not one opinion out there, right? And it's also why I'm so grateful so in Tropical, just like you have an undefined Ashna. Now in True Sidera, you, by the way, I think as well, defined Ashna. Okay. But it's also a defined Ashna in the lower expression has this like one way view. It's just this one you are not. The higher expression is actually also to be open to different perspectives. But we learn this more from the undefined Ashna energy. So I think there's so much misunderstanding and this like opinions and being right or wrong like look use this to broaden your horizon use what feels right to you there's no right or wrong just like in astrology right you can book a natal chart reading with 10 astrologers and they may all use a different system and you're not even going to question anything like I, I had a reading last year in tropical whole sign and tropical placidas they both had some similarities but also some very different elements yeah. and now i'm into true sidereal astrology which is based on the true constellations and the cosmos and that i have to say for me for me annalena doesn't mean it has to be for you it resonates so deeply one of the reasons is because in the tropical and mainly air signs i have a trine in air signs which also resonated with me because just communication is my thing right podcasting but I always had people tell me, you're so grounding, you're so calming. And I was kind of like, well, that's probably your conditioned self because you have so much air energy. And I'm... so now in the true sidereal, I'm like 80% earth. Like my shrine went all into earth signs. So very, 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 very interesting, right? And now my son is in the third house, was in the second house before. So I still am my Mercury... I think it's in the second house, but there's a lot of this like communication piece is still there, right? It's not like it's no longer there on the chart. And I just, I don't know. I feel that next level of resonance. That's it. Yeah. I want to, I want to just piece in here, like where my mind goes with all of this, with the whole mm. debate and all the yeah. thing. And even just within tropical human design, people are always, there's issues and all this stuff. Yeah, and yeah. My mind likes to kind of, again, like take that bigger picture stance and like kind of like zoom out a little bit. And it's, it comes down to identity. Hmm. If you are using human design as a way of labeling and identifying who you are, rather than using it as just a way to like relate to your experience, which is different. Hmm. When you identify as I am a 5-1 emotional manifesting generator and then someone comes along with cosmic human design and says, ah, actually, you're a 4-1 emotional generator. Mm. There goes your identity, right? Yep. And yep. anytime anyone has ever questioned anyone else's identity, guess what? It's usually not a great situation that evolves from that. Anytime you question someone's beliefs because people identify with their beliefs, mm -hmm. you, you it's usually not a great situation. As a five line, 
Because <laughs> having had many five line experiences where I accidentally questioned someone's identity, it's usually not a great situation. And so because the way the mind works is the mind needs to have that concrete, compartmentalized, I'm this, I'm not that, you're this, mm -hmm. you're not that, right? To It's the ego. It's how we can differentiate us from the rest of the world. But then we have to continue that journey and remember to bring it all back in and that it's all the same, right? And Part of that is I always feel like almost everything comes back to survival mechanisms. So if you have an identity then and, and someone else has an identity, then you get to compare my identity to your identity. Do Does my identity belong with your identity or not, right? Mm -hmm. I like folk music. You like R&B. Okay, I'm part of the folk music group. You're part of the R&B group. I'm in the folk music group. Now I feel like I belong. I feel like I belong because I have identified as this with this group of people. And when you feel like you belong, you mm -hmm. feel safe. Yep. And when you feel safe, because we're mammals, we're we're not really uh we're we're generally physiologically meant to be prey, not predators, right? And prey mentality is safety in numbers. So if you feel like you belong, in a group, you feel safe because statistically at a very, very basic level, you feel you're less likely to get eaten by a mountain lion, right? So mm -hmm. <laughs> that's where like my mind always takes it. It's like, why is this even such a big deal for people? And because it is yeah. really hard for us to get out of that compartmentalized viewpoint mm -hmm. because the brain gets really comfortable there. Yeah, yeah. It's really comfortable to be in that very defined, I'm this, you're that, mm. that person. Yeah, and that. you know, I also, I think I shared this already before, I think it was in my email uh, a few weeks ago, that I actually realized when I saw my cosmic chart, the human design, I was like, oh, wow, I actually did fall a little bit into the condition part where I was unconsciously, I wasn't even aware of it, using some of the things to limit myself. You know, because I'm this line, I, like I wasn't one of the things that I'm realizing now is that because as a two line, you know, I do things that come so easy to me and I do that. Obviously, I'm continued to love this energy, but I was a little bit like, let me not keep studying things and learning things because that's a one line thing. And now I have this newfound permission for myself and a little bit like, oh, I'm going to study now astrology because I, I want to. You know, and I also actually now that's my sign, my son is in the third house. That's what actually energizes me learning and studying. Right. So I can do both. I can learn and study in a healthy way and I can still do effortlessly what I know. You know, because it's I really realized like, whoa, I still have to be myself so careful not to create a construct of limitations for myself because I over identify with that. So in a way this cosmic human design takes me out of this conditioned bubble, like the next yeah. step. That's how I, that's how I perceive it. And also reminds me once more how we don't want to use human design. And I've talked about this before, but I had this really, really big realization with this, you know, it's, it's not this or that it's this end and whatever works for you, who cares? Yeah. You know? Yeah. I, I, there was a little bit of a time early on where I was trying to, instead of saying I am a 5 1 emotional manifesting generator, I was trying to instead say, I am here to display the sp full spectrum of possibilities of what it could be to emanate the energy of being a 5 1 emotional manifesting nice. generator. Because, like, really trying not to say I am. Like, it's the same thing with like emotions. Mm -hmm. You don't want to say, I am angry. No, you yeah, are yeah. not anger. Yeah. You are feeling angry, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So it's like, oh, I am feeling what it is to be a 5-1 yeah. emotional manifesting generator, which is different because it's not identity anymore. Mm -hmm. And I think it's really important for any system that mm -hmm. anyone uses to understand themselves. Yeah, is, it's, it's more like I can relate to that. 
because it, it's again we easily put ourselves into boxes no even just when we take the ties with authority we're still like all the billions of people i mean and as you know not all five one many gens with emotional authority are the same <laughs> huge differences right yeah. so and i, I want to cautious of time you still have to look at your chart briefly okay mm -hmm. perfect so i'm gonna pull it up right now and this is first your tropical chart Mm -hmm. Like you said, you talked. I mean, you talked a lot about it. You're five one many gen with emotional authority, so you have the fifty nine six channel. And I'm going to show you the true sidereal, which is like that cosmic human design. Now, what are your thoughts on this? So now you're one four generator emotional authority. You still have the same wave. That's actually very interesting. Yep. Same emotional wave. So here's where like, yeah, I, I can look at this and be like, okay, mm -hmm. so now I'm a one four instead of a five mm -hmm. one. Mm -hmm. The one still is freaking so resonant. <laughs> yeah. Right. I mean, you study so many things. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And, and like, I, even just in my environment, I have books on shelves and I surround myself like I love libraries I love just being in libraries they're the coolest things mm -hmm. I love the internet <laughs> I'm I'm shifting my my perspective from being reliant on physical books to like remembering that I have this thing that yeah. has every book ever possible yeah. you know so and then the four line is interesting because I feel like that's something that has been a challenging piece for me, right? The five line in me, like some of the keynotes of five line is where we're designed to impact strangers mm. more so than the people that are close yeah. to us. And that the four line is actually like, oh, no, you really cultivate deep intimacy. But guess what? I also have gate 59, which is also about intimacy. Yeah. So right. Mm -hmm. And I have that in both designs. So I could see how the four line could come through as the 59 in my in my tropical mm -hmm. and the 4323 i mean that's basically the 3420 uh, <laughs> yeah i mean i mean i could totally like you you can talk and talk and there's so much wisdom coming out of you right it's that the genius kind of energy and obviously when people are not ready it, they think we are freaky right which can yeah. we then also again do the five line I mean, yeah, it's the five line with combined with the twenty thirty four channel is like the forty three twenty three. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. It's I found that the more I study these charts and the more I study this system and read charts for other people, the more I do find that like different configurations of definition still can have very similar flavors, just slightly different quality of mm -hmm. again where it's coming from and where it's going to and yeah no and also because that's why i find it's so interesting also from my own journey i have always been mostly interested in the gates the 64 gates and then the channels and obviously then the gene keys and i have just learned over time that so many gates have a similar message it's just in a different way like how we access this energy right like also for you now you no longer have the 34, you're no longer a manifesting generator, but you have the 2838, the 28 double. And the 28 is a three line energy, which is a manifesting generator archetype energy, right? It's about experimenting, adventure. And also you need that physical activity here, right? So it's, that's why I find it so fascinating how, how the charts always tell this beautiful story. And, and wow, you have actually the 2343 is your conscious and unconscious North and South. Mode. Like that's big, yeah. right? That's really you, fascinating. You know what I'm noticing right now too, is that four of the gates that are hanging in this sidereal chart mm -hmm. are the electromagnetic for four of the hanging gates I have in my tropical chart. Wow. How interesting. So I have the 11 hanging he, in this chart, we have the 56 hanging. I have yeah. in, in tropical, I have the 29 is my son. In this, the 46 is hanging. I also have the nine in a, in my other chart and the 52 is hanging. Like, so, you know, like when you have the hanging gate, it's like, mm. it's looking for the one that's not there all the time. 
So you're almost electromagnetically drawn to your tropical design, right? I am my own yeah. electromagnetic. <laughs> <laughs> which which then is would be for, for me the message like we don't need other people. Like we can be complete with ourselves, right? Um, why we love being with other people, but it's not like it's so interesting. Hmm. Yeah. So I see it, it's it's to me, it's like this is the future evolution uh-huh. of my tropical chart yeah because yeah. again that sidereal is looking at the adjustments right that we haven't yeah. accounted for in the tropical yeah. chart and it's like it is much more like futuristic cosmic yeah. bigger blown out so and being that <laughs> this matches up with a lot of electromagnetics in mm. my other chart it's like again reinforcing we all have all of the chart. I love it. I love it. No, and I also, you, your conscious son is a 56, right? I mean, you are so much telling stories, just like talking to you. That's such a beautiful energy for you. Yeah. And in the and, other chart, I had the 13 was my moon, which is also very uh, yeah, much a story so that's, that's my conscious son and the tropical. Yeah, exactly. Right. And also the five line energy, I would now, if I look at your chart now, I would say, one, it's your attraction sphere, which is huge. You have a five line there. That in itself explains it all. That's the attraction sphere, right? And the jinkies. You have a five line in your conscious Jupiter, which is your pearl, has a lot to do with prosperity. And your unconscious Venus, which is a lot about, especially relationship with other women, a 51, a little bit poking, shocking energy, right? So here you go. It's very, very interesting. Yes. Oh, I found, I was looking for this piece of paper. So I, I recommend this is a fun little thing to do is to go through your chart and not just you, but anybody listening, go through your chart and count up how many one lines do you have to find? Mm -hmm. How many twos, yeah. how many threes? Because I have more four lines defined than I do five lines in my tropical, mm -hmm. which also is why the four line resonates for me. Yeah. Because I, I have uh the, I have five gates that are in the fourth line in my tropical Mm. Whereas I only have three of the five mm. and I have seven of the line one. So of course, line one is still a problem. Yeah, you theme. have seven. I was just counting. You have seven one lines in this chart, actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah it, that's exactly. I do this with my uh, clients oftentimes as well, because that's what I have found when people so much attached to their profile and they were like, well, but I also resonate with this. Like, yeah, I look at your entire chart and even the ones you don't, you amplify them from others and the transits. I mean, we go through all six lines a gazillion times. I mean, just from the sun alone, we go through all lines 64 times and then the, the earth and then Mercury, all the planets. I mean, we all constantly are exposed to the energy. Yeah. The lines every yeah. single week over and over again. Yeah. And then you think about any conditioning fields that you're around all the time. So like me and my husband, my husband mm -hmm. is a five, one self-projected projector in tropical. Mm -hmm. And he has a defined head, defined Ajna, defined throat, defined G. And he has, we have a lot of, a fair amount of electromagnetics together. So like, I'm also, I always have access to that stuff too. And yeah. he always has access to mine. Like sometimes I look at him, I'm like, man, you're acting like an MG right now. <laughs> like <laughs> He has 500 projects going on and he's running around like doing mm. them all in a kind of spiralic process the way I usually do. And I'm like, oh, that's interesting. But he's getting a lot mm. of stuff done. So it's great. Yeah. You know, like whatever. Yeah. And that is so important, right? Because I always that's when I get sad sometimes when I hear people say, well, I'm a projector. I cannot be multi-passionate. I'm like, no, <laughs> like we all can be multi-passionate. Right. And yeah. I actually have found through this cosmic human design so much confirmation for how I personally have always viewed human design, this all expansive. And we're just here to learn like every um, type I'm, I'm going to actually, I feel like more called to call it archetypes. Like we are here to learn something from each archetype, right? There's something to learn from the manifesto, which for me is the informing. I think we all need to inform. It's the best relationship skill you can ever have, you know? Yeah. And um, but we're learning it mostly through the manifesto and the reflector and the projector and the gens and many gens. There's we can have it all, you know. And and now the big question I had this come up in my membership like, okay, I'm a projector in this system and I'm a many gen in this system. Like, what aura do I have? So I'm like, yeah, you can have it all. Like, don't let yourself limit by any of it. Yeah, you know. Yeah, and again, it comes back to like 
it doesn't really matter. Are you living true to what feels right for exactly. you? Exactly. Yeah. And I, I definitely fell into that trap where like when I was sharing with my husband early on about what it means to be self-projected, that he has to speak mm -hmm. out loud to get his clarity and all that stuff. I did have that thought like, oh, so I'm not supposed to speak my speak to find clarity. But my 2034 needs to talk, but it's I mean, just a different way. The, it, and the 4323 needs to talk. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, if I were to look at this chart, I'm going to tell you, yeah, you're a generator, but you're also a mental projector. That's always yeah. how I've done readings because people, oh, but only projectors need to talk and have a sounding board. Like, no, guys, this is because no. this is a projected energy, that channel itself. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And, and what really gets me too is about the emotional wave piece. So like the strategy, uh, the authority for emotional authority is to wait over, wait for clarity over time. Right. Mm -hmm. Does that mean that only people with emotional authority need to wait for clarity? No, I have also, oh. no, I mean, I can tell you, I have an open solar plexus and tropical and I have done lots of trainings now and I always emphasize, especially the people that have an undefined solar plexus you feel more you amplify you don't even know what the heck you really feel in your cycle because you amplify emotions so you probably have to wait even longer yeah so thank you for because i have been trying to scream it from the rooftop <laughs> a skyscraper yeah. no like there there's definitely like a good handful of broad stroke generic like pieces of advice mm -hmm. and one of them is if you're feeling emotionally heightened don't make a decision yeah, in for that anyone. moment. Exactly. Doesn't matter who you are. Doesn't matter what your design looks like. Yeah, yeah. Well, Don't also, make any decisions in the heat of the moment. Yeah. The other thing is for me also, like sometimes I get the sense that people with undefined uh, solar plexus blame the people with the emo because I only I feel so emotional because of them. We are all here to to feel emotions. That's why I also love the gene keys because. Yeah. They kind of don't even engage in this topic. And it's somewhere Richard Rudd mentions in his book, like we all feel emotions. It's just, yeah. yeah so this energetic blueprint, it's it's in a different way. And it's the same with a sequel. I have gotten so frustrated with this idea that only gens and many gens are supposed to work and projectors have no energy and they get conditioned by the generators. I'm like, oh my God, you guys, this is doing the opposite of what human design is supposed to do, right? We all have energy. We just access it in a different way. And I have my ups and downs. I have, I'm a, you and I, we are both generator types in both type systems, right? Like, we can get burned out. We can get tired. We have phases where we don't want to do anything sometimes for days. I have that too. You know, it's just a little bit more, I think, distinct for the undefined sequels because the root center, the emotional solar plexus and the will and the sequel, they're all motor centers. So all of them have that same dynamic, Yeah. you know, with, with that on and off kind of cycle and then amplify energy and not. So I'm so happy for not being alone with my <laughs> over all encompassing expansive view of how I how I see human design so it's, it's very I really enjoyed our conversation so much you have no idea yeah me uh, it's I think one of my favorite episodes ever because <laughs> um, I think so many more people will benefit from this um, because I have, I have gotten so much feedback already like because oftentimes people actually you know, they find human design and they feel really limited by that. And honest truth to me is that that can happen with anything out there. It's always how you use something. You can use everything as an excuse not to do something or an excuse for bad behavior, whatever. Bad behavior, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> seriously. You can say like, oh, this is my five line. That's why I'm going to be unfriendly. Or, you know, we could use it in this way. Or... We can use anything to understand ourselves better, you know? And if, if you feel like this is helping you to trust yourself more, where like you said it also in, at some point, and I have gotten to this more and more recently, that I feel like at some point you're not gonna need human design or anything anymore because you just trust yourself. And I think the most successful people out there, they actually are the most blessed are the ones that never questioned their own intuition. They just trusted themselves. They don't need freaking human design or any of those archetypal thingies. 
you know, it's always just here to tell you, hey, you can be you, be different, trust yourself. That's the main key message from human design. Trust yourself. You got yes. that? Yes. Experiment, play, yeah. trust yourself. Mm -hmm. absolutely so I love it it's like each gate is just a way of saying okay here's just like a slice of the human experience yeah test it out mm -hmm. test it out does this feel like yeah. something you can rely on or not and mm -hmm. within you in your experience and then okay and then set it aside and test out another piece but don't forget to look at the whole thing yeah. all together again exactly Oh, gosh, I love it. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. So before we end this episode, I want to give you the opportunity to share a little bit about your project, the Music by Design podcast. Yes, thank you. Uh, so I just launched my podcast called Music by Design. It is just a fun, playful exploration, wildly anecdotal, <laughs> semi-scientific, <laughs> where we look at music that we like and I interview people who are both fans of music as well as people who create music and obviously they're also fans of music too but um, we talk about what is it about this music I like to hear people's stories of how they how they came to really love that artist and then we look at the charts and we see like what might be the thing because in general we're going to be drawn to something naturally that we resonate with. So typically mm -hmm. I find that I first I look for like what energetics do they have in common? Like, like if you're a fan of Eddie Vedder from Pearl Jam and I look at his chart and I look at your chart and, and he's writing the lyrics and he's making the music and he's performing it. So all the music he makes is just loaded with his energy, his blueprint, mm. his expression. And then we look at yours and it's like, where are you feeling resonance in his expression, right? Mm -hmm. And and we find that, again, that sense of belonging, that sense of kinship and camaraderie in energetics we have similar. And also on the other side, sometimes there's electromagnetics. I've seen some people who have virtually no energetics in common, no companionship energy, but they have seven electromagnetic channels with that artist. And what they're, what are, how is that coming through? And like the, when they listen to that music, mm -hmm. what is it sparking for them? What is it, what is it inspiring them and motivating them for? And then when I interview creators, it's, I like to find out what is your process? How does, how does the music come through? How do lyrics come through? How are you synthesizing your life experience and, and creating music that people are then finding that relationship to. And it's really fun. And I'm really, really enjoying the process. And I really enjoyed my interview with you, Annalena. Yeah, it was awesome. Um, the next episode is coming out on February 23rd. And they come out every other week. And I have created mm -hmm. a Patreon page too. So I don't do video with the podcast, but I do post on the Patreon page. I do little write-ups and I put the charts that we looked at and highlight the things that we talked about and things like that. So you can kind of go to the Patreon and download the charts and and look at them and follow along and you can see what we're referencing if, mm -hmm. if that's your if that's yeah, your jam. I really enjoyed that conversation because it was such a new twist for me on human design and gave me a lot of compassion for my music taste because you also just so you guys know you also pull in astro cartography into yeah. this as well so it was super super interesting so thank you for that and before we get off get off what's one final nugget of wisdom that you want to leave the listeners with? Mm. Don't take it too seriously. Oh, gosh. Yeah. <laughs> Again, my gate 30. <laughs> I have gate 30 is my unconscious or my conscious earth. And I find myself always leaning back into that gift that and or not even the gift. The city frequency is lightness. Mm. Remember, it's all a big joke. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> if you read, yeah. read Richard Rudd's. Yeah, he city. says. 
And yeah. he says in the end of the first week sequence, and I think I've shared this now numerous times, like, and the biggest joke of all is that all 64 gene keys have relevance for all of us. Yeah. Mm. yeah. I love it. I love it. Yeah. So thank you so much. And I, of course, I'm going to make sure so people can find you on Instagram, your website. I think you also have a sign up for your newsletter. So I'm going yeah. to make sure. Pop it in the yeah. show notes. Is there anything else you want to mention? Really, I love connecting on Instagram. That's my favorite place, um, you know, aside from the podcast, which is also fun. You can ask questions on there, too, if you listen on Spotify or anything like that. But yeah, Instagram at Anna with Intention is the number one place to go. My website's a little out of date, so I don't I don't recommend going there. <laughs> That's OK. Thank you so much for being here, for reaching out, for having this deeply enlightening I think it's going to be very life-changing for many conversation. And yeah, just thank you from the bottom of my heart. Thank you again, Annalene. And thank you, everyone who's been listening. Appreciate it. And you listeners, thank you for being here. And I'm excited as always to be with you on the next episode.